in today's video we will talk about this big boy a 2006 Mac Pro and uh, it's a special machine and I want to do a five things I like about it and five things I dislike about it thanks to some guy who wrote it under my videos that I should do this series and it's a great idea so I unfortunately forgot how you were called so if you watch this I'm sorry <laughs> but it was a great idea so um, this Mac Pro is this year turning 12. 12 years is an insane age for a computer and I think this is one of the last veterans to reach such an age and not be horribly obsolete. Because with all this planned obsolescence that we have in today's computers, they will probably all be obsolete five years from now and or maybe the faster ones like 10 years and there's nothing you can really do about it but in this you could and that's why it's still holding up so nice so here are the five things I like about it the first thing I like about it is probably the thing I like about it the most upgradability upgradability if I was a preacher I would totally preach upgradability because upgradability will save us all at least our wallets because when you open this nice door here which is by the way beautifully engineered no other machine has done it so great the power max have done it great as well when i can just flip it up but here they found it one better because you can just flip this open like so and put this away and uh, you don't have to have a lot of space like when it so when it comes down like on the power max but anyway they introduced that in the power mac g5s by the way anyway and when you look in here you see one two three four hard drive base that you can just grab and pull and there is your hard drive not any kind of special tool required and 40 minutes of frustrating work to get the hard drive out no just one pull and it's there and then you screw it in you put it back you fire up your mac pro and there it is in os 10. beautiful absolutely like it same goes for optical drive you can just pull this caddy if it ah, there we go it's uh, kind of you know sitting there for a long time so here we go it's coming out now now i would need to unplug the cables which uh I will not do but that's how you do it you know it's it's, <laughs> it's so simple and uh, I could screw in a second uh, optical drive right away push this back into place and boom we're done and same goes for RAM I mean I just can show you this so simple and easily I, I still find it incredible they made this cool trays and um, here you stick your RAM on and you push it back and you're done and the GPU upgrade pretty much goes the same way as in any desktop PC so upgradability this is probably the max biggest pro and it totally deserves its name in that way because this is really pro and if it wasn't that upgradable I would surely not be standing right next to it and say it's such a nice and usable machine in 2018 the second thing I like about it is the power. Oh yes, the power. You can really spec this up to be a nice computer still. And uh, what's so cool about this is it has two processors. Yes, two physical CPUs. Who can say that in his computer he has two physical CPUs? And not only two single core, no, the base, the base model for this or two dual cores, so in, in total a quad core, and mine, as you know, after a horrible procedure, I upgraded it to eight cores. And you could even go one better and upgrade it to a 12 core. So even at this age, these processors are so capable. Rendering video, like 1080p video, is absolutely fine. Same goes for any kind of 3D animating stuff. I, even lend that to a friend who wanted to try out something crazy in After Effects because I have no idea about After Effects. And he said, how old is this computer? And I'm like, yeah, it's 
about 12 years old. He had no way it can't be. This old, this old computer can't be so good. And he, I'm like, yes, it can, yes, it is. I'm not shitting you guys. Uh, this is really still a capable machine. Uh, yeah, it's using sort of old parts, but it's not using slow old parts. So the power is real and uh, it outperforms, for example, my 2010 iMac, which is a good four years newer in uh, hardware. Uh, but still, my Mac Pro 26 is faster. So that says a lot, I think. Number three, connectivity. That's something modern Macs have lost. However, this still has a very nice connectivity. So if you go here on the front, you have a headphone jack, two USB 2s, a FireWire 400 and 800 port. You also have two optical drives. And when you go to the other side, you have the power supply. Uh, but under here, you have your GPU with additional one, two, three PCI slots in my case. So if you would have like a, a one slot uh, GPU, we would even have one more. So plenty to upgrade there. Three USBs, a, another 400 and 800 FireWire. Here we have uh, optical audio. So for the pro audio guys, still also very usable. And I know some guys who still use these and that work in music and those as you know, require more CPU power than GPU power. So this is still a very kicky, kick-ass machine for them. Then you have here a headphone or audio out and a microphone and two LAN ports, two. Some computers today don't even have one, but this has two. So sure, there are computers that have more ports, but however, in Mac terms, this is really the king of connectivity. Reason number four, I like this Mac Pro. The looks. Now, yes, it's always some somewhat subjective. However, I can guarantee you that seven out of ten people will consider this pretty good looking. Especially when you look at some boring PCs from this era. I think this was um, maybe a little too old to be the same age, but the Power Mac G5s look the same. So look at this PC and then you look at this. Please tell me which one looks better. I mean, this is <laughs> at, at an age of 12 years coming up. Uh, it's still looking awesome. All this aluminum, very nice crafted, very high quality. It's very heavy, of course, resulting in this, but... I don't care. Also, the inside is looking so sexy for a computer. And everything is so high quality. And I think the looks in, and the, the quality of this is just insane. And it really still holds up nice. They kept this design until 2012. Uh, where they made the last real Mac Pros. Then they sort of moved to a design that looked like this. But uh, this look... Again, I'm saying it's sort of subjective. I don't think it looks obsolete. Like, uh, this looks kind of retro, you know? Retro-ish. And when you think about it, this was the predecessor. So this was the design before this design. The G5s, again, looked sort of, sort of like this. They had different ports. It only one optical drive bay. But uh, in the same way like the G5s looked, just look at this. This looks retro, but one would say it looks old. But this... I don't think that anyone considers this old looking and it's impressive and uh, it's a monstrosity of a computer so just really good looks and number five I liked about it that must be the amount of configurations you can get this in you can get this in either a quad core eight core or 12 core configuration with up to 32 gigs of RAM and uh, depends on the previous user you might even have up to four hard drives and you can stick any GPU in it you want and uh, it, it's just endless possibilities it's pretty much like a PC in this in this in this term and you, you can get it in so many different configurations not only like 
in terms of CPU, but also, as I said, RAM and maybe expansion card slots that are occupied with something. Maybe a USB 3.0 card or who knows, could be anything. So also a rare thing to get on a Mac. So now let's get to the things I dislike about it. Yes, as cool as it looks and as cool as it works, there are still things that I dislike about it. Starting with that it's only officially supported up to Mac OS X Lion, that's version 10.7. This is just absolutely unacceptable and ridiculous considering the hardware of this machine. Now, Apple did this for a reason. They want to make this obsolete. They want to make people get a, get a newer computer, of course. But fortunately, some awesome hacker made a uh, hack where you can hack this to run up to 10.11. So El Capitan, that's quite a, uh, a leap in operating systems. However, Unfortunately, it's also stuck there because 10.12 Sierra has CPU instructions that these old Xeons don't have anymore, which is very unfortunate because if they would make it work on an old chip like that, this would still kick ass. I'm not exaggerating. If you put an SSD in this and it would work, you could easily have a capable machine on like the latest OS 10. However, there is no way around it. 10.7 is the last official release. And when you hack this to a later version, like I did 10.11, uh, you are getting in sorta a Hackintosh territory. And that means when you may make an update, when an update comes for security, for example, that effed up my whole system. I had to reinstall this whole goddamn computer because of this one stupid security update. And uh, <laughs> this is very bad because that's what people buy a Mac for. They, they want a Mac that runs reliably and that I can't really say on later like hacked versions of OS X and that's very unfortunate. So that's one thing I dislike this the support stopped at 10.7. And you have to get it to a newer version because 10.7 right now is totally obsolete. You can't even get latest web browsers anymore. And that is very unfortunate. The next thing I dislike about it is the crazy prices for proprietary parts. After all, this is still a Mac from Apple. And Apple likes to build sort of weird parts sometimes. And when you need to replace them, they can get pretty pricey. For example, I'm gonna show you the power supply, how much this old ass power supply from 06 still goes on eBay. Okay, here we have some Mac Pro power supplies. And this one is, you know, fine. However, for such an old power supply, I have to say though, it's a 980 watt power supply. Uh, <laughs> See, see these prices? You can get new, brand new, modern power supplies for less. Stuff like this just keeps adding up, you know, and that's pretty much a price you pay for the entire machine in some countries. So you really have to ask yourself if this thing goes bad, it's not really known to do that, but anyway, if this thing goes bad, do you still wanna replace it? So uh, if you look at these, I uh, can't imagine these being cheap, for example. Uh, or I don't want to imagine how much this side panel costs. This solid piece of aluminium. Whew. So you better take care of it. Now, thankfully, these things are known to be very reliable. Uh, so power supply and stuff and like these boards, they really never go bad. But if they do, you have to pay. So these two things that I told you about, these were pretty much my main gripes about this. And I kind of had a hard time finding some more stuff I dislike about it because it's just such a nice system. However, I found some and that is the next thing, the GPUs. There are only four official GPUs supported. So if you want a like 100,000% 
original supported system, you need to get one of these four GPUs. Now, all of these are pretty old and pretty outdated, but if you want uh, the official C GPUs, then you're stuck with these, or you just go the way everybody does with these old Mac Pros. You just get an, uh, any sort of PC video card and put it in, and especially like the ATIs, they all really work well. I, for example, got this here from a friend of mine that he used in his main PC for a long time, and it works beautifully. No driver it needs to be installed, nothing. And even with the NVIDIA cards, it also works pretty good. So you just go with a PC card. Yes, you will have to either flash it or live without a boot screen. And uh, that also means no uh, like hard drive boot select selector, like no boot, no boot menu is also not gonna show up. So you th should think of kind of keeping around the original video card just for troubleshooting purposes or maybe put it in a different slot up there just for you know troubleshooting so that's another thing uh i heard that later mac pros like 28 and up they're not so uh so limited with graphics cards but these old like first gen second gen mac pros are a little trouble when it comes to gpus thing number four i don't like is the prices these guys sell for. Um, it is definitely, depending on the country, incredible how the prices differ. Uh, but in Austria, where I live, there are not so many Mac Pros around. And uh, these guys who have them, <laughs> they charge insane money for these. Doesn't matter if they're old. If they have an Apple logo on them, they must be expensive, right? So, um... I was that lucky guy that got this Mac Pro from a guy who knew what was going on. This was used as a graphic, uh, in a graphic designing studio. And uh, he knew that he can't really charge all that much for it because it was the baseline with uh, quad core and, and the original video card and no hard drive. So, uh, you know, he charged me hundred bucks for it. Now, uh, that is very rare in Austria. You will either go with 300 and if you have an upgraded one, you can go up to 500 and uh, these guys don't care if you have only up to 10.7 support. They just, you know, sell it for this insane money and they, they get through with it. <laughs> so if I ever sell this, I will definitely like uh, put a hefty price tag on this. Now, if somebody is actually going to buy this, I don't know. But I know that these things are expensive where I live and that really sucks. And the last thing I don't like about the Mac Pro is the power consumption. You have to think we have two power hungry old Xeons, in my case an old graphics card from a PC, and old hardware generally. So the power consumption is not gonna be economical, I can tell you this. And if you max it out like 100% CPU usage, uh, this 980 watt power supply, I uh, think uh, will have to work and that means your power bill will go up a little bit. So I don't think it is a good server machine in this day and age anymore. Um, it's truly reliable and nice, but in terms of power consumption, it surely isn't very good. Um, so that are my my points. I dislike about it. Um, what do you guys think about this old Mac Pro? Is it still good? Is it an old POS? Um, what do you think about it? I can tell you, and I've said it a million times, if you have one of those and you upgrade it and you're fine with like El Capitan, just go with it. It's, it's such an awesome piece of hardware and, uh, this was Apple's Prime. This was what a pro customer wanted. And um, I can't stress it enough. It's such a nice design, a nice, reliable Mac. And uh, yeah, with these words, I thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next video.